Wow. Okay, now that's how you tear some stuff up. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the recent load test results that we've been conducting on components for the EMG6 electric motor glider. Hang tight, we'll get right back to it and take a closer look into these destruction tests. So welcome back. Um, in this video, we're down in Hangar 2. And in Hangar 2, we have a setup that we've built for uh, load testing many of the components that we want to uh, validate the uh, structural integrity of. And so what you see here is our fixture. And on the left-hand side, down at the lower left-hand corner there, we have the attachment fixture. Um, with a 10,000 pound load cell and we've got a 3d printed um, Holder for the for the load cell just to keep it from bouncing around and then uh, we have a hydraulic ram and that's capable of Almost 10,000 pounds not quite we're uh, we're capable of uh, About 9,000 pounds on that, but because the load cell is only rated for 10,000 that works out just about right and then what we have is a hydraulic pump on the right hand side uh, with a valve and a lever which allows us to run the ram in and out as well as uh, toggle the pump motor and we just um, either run it full tilt or we will pulse the thing in order to be able to um, achieve the results that we want. It broke the bottom fitting out. Oh, it broke the strut. Huh. Okay, let's shut it all down and then we'll... we'll that was a tube you just had to drill a hole in. It doesn't have, didn't have the end on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I see that here. Let's take a, let's take a picture of it. And here. during each test we have usually about four to five cameras running, um, taking a look at different areas. And so we can kind of get some good analysis of how the failure occurred. But... Um, this is pretty typical process where we fail and then we start uh, analyzing. Yeah, now it focused. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize what we'd done there, but that's pretty good where we're failing that instead of any of the other two. Um, we had that other fitting, but you had me leave it in that other one while you were doing stuff. Yeah, let's change out the fitting to the, the to the real thing. fitting. So let's just take a look at some of the um, individual tests that we've done and we'll just kind of uh, go through each one of them uh, very briefly to give you an idea of um, some of the results that we were getting uh, with each one of these. So our first test that we're going to do is on the horizontal stabilizer lift strut um, and we've installed a new fitting on this one to test. Uh, we've done lots of different tests on um, different fittings and um, for the primary purpose of trying to um, both reduce cost, simplify the construction, uh, just make it better overall. Um, one of the things we do on each one of these tests is we um, uh, put the um, load cell digital readout in the frame and we've got a hold function on it so it stays uh, and holds the highest reading that we get during the failure. And in this case here, we actually failed the uh, attach fitting bolt um, because we didn't have it tight enough, basically. After making two or three other tests and having some failures on the uh, stainless steel link that ties it in, we failed a couple of those, we finally got down to the point where we started getting some good uh, test data here. Looks like everything's good here. Everything's good there. I'm on 60 frames a second. Okay, go ahead. Now we awesome. got something. Now we got some shear going. That's on. what we wanted to see. How much was it? 35,000 or 3,512. 35,000 would be really good. <laughs> yeah, 3,512. So that's a pretty good test. Um, and if you think about it, the um, each one of the stainless steel pop rivets is good for uh, approximately 400 pounds single shear. And so uh, 4 times 6 is going to give us 24. 
So 2,400 times a 1.5 safety factor gives us 36. So we're in the ballpark from what we actually expected on this thing. The next one we'll look at here is a uh, mock-up of the Quicksilver GT400 uh, wing lift strut. And we'll just test that, use that for some baseline uh, data to compare against the EMG6. Hang up. Oh, I think Austin won. I said 23 and it's 2492. The next test we're going to look at here is the EMG6 <laughs> lift struts. And this is the configuration for the uh, rear strut that attaches to the rear spar. That was awesome. So this is the same test on um, the same configuration with the exception that the uh, end fitting is switched out to a 5 16th inch bolt. Holy shit, man. 49.62. Okay, let's do it. And the last uh, test in the series here will show the forward spar lift strut um, configuration here. And this is, this is exactly how it's installed in the airplane, except for the length, of course. So we've reached the limitations of our hydraulic uh, tester right here. Uh, the pump and the ram together don't have the capacity to be able to pull enough to be able to fail this thing. Um, that's probably a good thing. This is getting kind of scary at this point. Everybody backed up to the other side of the hangar when this started taking place. So anyway, you've got an idea of what we've been doing with the uh, testing on the components for the EMG-6. As always, we enjoy sharing all of these little experiments from the workshop with you. And of course, if you like them, we want you to give us a thumbs up. And we love it when you share our videos with others. And subscribe to our video if you're new to this channel. We've got lots more of this kind of stuff coming up. And we'll see you when we do the next one.